The topic for this week's tip of the week is going to be decreases and we're actually I'm going to be talking about decreases for the next couple of weeks because decreases there are a lot of them there are a lot of different ways to work them and they're very important because they're used for shaping as this example shows you this is a v-neck and the reason why it is so important is this is very visible as it's near your neckline and if they're not shaped properly or if they don't match up and they're not mirrored it's going to detract from the general impression of the neckline and it's what's going to make something look homemade rather than handmade. Now we're going to start this week with knit two together since that's the most simplest and easiest of all decreases and in my actual blog entry there's going to be a lot more information about mirroring decreases, um, how to decide which type to use at which side, um, etc. because that is much more applicable to a prose discussion than to a video. But in this example, these are knit two decreases on this side because they are slanting towards the right. These are SSK decreases over here. And the placement of these decreases are blended. That is, the decreases blend in with the direction of the slant. This side of the neckline is slanting towards the right, so I'm using a right slanting decrease there. We'll talk about full fashion, which is the opposite of this in my blog, but um, this is the full fashioned. Now, if it's very important that you don't use the same type of decreases on the same piece. In this little example, which I have here, these are knit to decreases, and they've been used on the same side of the swatch. And if you notice, on this side, the decrease sort of is tucked under this column of stitches. On this side, it is abutting against a column of stitches. This isn't mirrored, although the edges do decrease. If you were to stand back from this, it is not a mirrored appearance, particularly when you compare it to one where I have used different decreases on both sides. These are SSKs, these are knit two togethers. And next week we'll talk about SSKs, but for now we're just gonna talk about knit two together and <clears throat> that is what I'm gonna be demonstrating. And I don't even know why I'm bothering. These are so simple. To do a knit two together, you just work to the location of the stitches that you want to decrease. You insert your needle into both of the stitches at the same time and you knit them off. Now if you notice that top stitch, the second stitch, lays on top of the first stitch and it slants towards the right. Again, to make a knit two together, I insert from the bottom of the second one, I knit the two stitches together and there they are. And that's all there is to a knit two together. Now again, you're rarely going to be using a knit two together alone. Uh, sometimes, oh, if you're shaping the top of a hat, or if you're decreasing at the end of ribbing, you might be using this decrease alone, but generally you're going to be pairing it up with another type of decrease, for example, around a neckline, um, armholes of a sweater. So next week we will learn uh, more about decreases and read my blog because uh, I'm going to go into a very long and thorough discussion of decreases, how to place them, how to shape them, etc. And this is of, of importance to people doing the master's program uh, because it's something that's very important and we discuss in the program quite a bit.